So as I said, hopefully you all are in the right room. Um, I was realizing that some of you may not realize that OTEL is short for open telemetry, so this is just my play on the title. Um, quick introduction, my name is Reese Lee. Can you guys hear me? I can't tell this is awesome. Okay. I am a developer relations engineer by day at New Relic. Um, I previously started actually in tech support, and I mentioned that because I really enjoy working directly with the end users, and so that's how I landed in the Open Telemetry End User Working Group when I was um, switching for how I could best contribute to the project. Um, we have two overarching goals, which is to increase the adoption and implementation of the project, as well as to maintain and facilitate a feedback loop to help improve the project. Um, to that end, we host um, various activities to uh, connect end users and contributors. Um, for the interest of time, I won't get too much into those, but definitely feel free to come find me after it or come to the Open Telemetry booth in the Solutions so Showcase. Um, a quick fun fact about myself is I'm Roju from Malaysia. I have lived in the Pacific Northwest in the States for almost 20 years at this point. Um, and the Netherlands is my 15th country that I've been to, so yay. Okay, I have, can I use? Hello? Hello? Hi, Avi, can I actually use one of the handheld mics? This is killing my vibe right now. Oh, there we go, okay. So I've categorized today's content into four broad categories. We're gonna do a quick metrics overview, followed by a quick open telemetry overview, and then we'll get into the meat of the talk, which is a metrics dip, and then we'll look at some next steps for you to take after the session to learn more about metrics. So first we'll start with a metrics overview. We'll look at what is a metric and why are they useful. What is a metric? A metric is simply a measurement about a service that's captured at runtime. And um, these measurements can be further aggregated over time to help us identify trends and patterns. Oh, also, there's broad categories of um, metrics, right? You have application runtime metrics, you've got infrastructure metrics, and you probably also want to collect some custom or business metrics as well. Um, to illustrate this, as well as subsequent concepts, I'm going to use the open telemetry community demo application um, as a basis for our, of, um, for our examples. So the demo application is actually based off of GCP's hipster shop, which I think is now called the online boutique. Um, so a lot of you may already be familiar with it. Um, we have updated it so that it sells telescopes because our logo is a telescope. So with this in mind, what are some examples of metrics we might want to collect about our application to understand um, the health and monitor the performance? So off the bat, we've got some uh, standard metrics we call golden signals. So things like throughput, response time, and error rate to help us understand um, traffic, latency, and errors that are occurring. We might want to look at CPU utilization, and we might also be interested in collecting custom metrics such as number of active users, total process orders, total process orders of a specific item, and these are all examples of metrics. Why are metrics useful? So there's really two parts to this question, which is, um, one, why are metrics useful in general for observability? And what characteristics about metrics make them more useful than the other two main telemetry types, which are traces and logs? So generally, all three are used, um, usually in conjunction with each other, to monitor the performance of your system or application. Um, you can also use span data to power certain graphs and charts, but generally, metrics are much better suited and more broadly used to um, power graphs and charts. Um, numbers are optimized for processing, storing, uh, compression, and retrieval, which makes them um, easier to query as well as enable longer retention of data. And where metric data really shine is helping us reduce the volume of data while still providing insight into that data. So if we were to export and analyze measurements one by one, that could be really expensive. Metrics help us reduce the volume of data. And finally, for alerting, uh, metrics form the basis of SLIs, or service level indicators, which are then used to set SLOs, or service level objectives, 
um, which teams use to calculate their error budgets. OK, if you're here, um, I presume that you may be familiar with uh, OpenTelemetry, but just so everyone's on the same page, we're going to do a quick refresher on what is OpenTelemetry. OpenTelemetry is an observability framework built on an open standard. It was formed back in 2019 as a result of two existing projects merging, Open Tracing and Open Census. It is now, actually, I think as of last year um, that I know of, it was the second most active CNCF project in terms of contrib contributions after Kubernetes. And the project aims to standardize how applications are instrumented, as well as how telemetry is generated, collected, and exported. Uh, something to consider is that open telemetry is not a data visualization tool um, and it is not a storage solution. So you do still need to send your data to um, a backend platform to analyze your data. So how does open telemetry do all this? It does that by providing a set of language specific APIs and SDKs, tools, components such as the collector, instrumentation libraries, semantic conventions, as well as a protocol called OTLP or Open Telemetry Line Protocol. And so going back to the demo application that we're using as our example, it is um, an application that consists of several microservices written in different languages including Java, .NET, Python, and Ruby that talk um, to each other over gRPC and HTTP. With OpenTelemetry, we have one standardized set of tools that you can use to instrument everything. And you can instrument um, all your services once and pretty much be able to send your data to whichever backend of your choice. And you can update that backend simply by changing your exported endpoint, which is one of the biggest draws of OpenTelemetry. It gives you freedom from vendor lock-in and also makes changing them out really easy. OK, so we are going to get into the me section of this talk. Um, hopefully, I left enough time for um, this section. OK, so we're going to cover such and scope, metrics and open telemetry. We're going to look at the architecture of a metrics pipeline. And then we're going to look at metric instruments, uh, types, and their use cases. OK, so I want to quickly explain why I'm calling this section metrics dip. Um, so the scope of this session is necessarily um, very brief, right, to fit into a 35 and now 25 minute time slot. Um, so there's really so much more on this topic that you could get into. A lot of the concepts that I cover here could really be their own full sessions. Um, and so metrics dip is just a, a play on the term deep dive. So rather than, you know, uh, putting on a scuba suit and deep diving into the lake of metrics, we're really just kind of dipping our feet into the water. But um, hopefully I've made this session such that you leave with a solid foundation of um, at least how to get started. I also will have a list of references um, for you to look into for um, next steps to learn more. Okay, so metrics and open telemetry is broken out into the API and the SDK. The API is used to instrument code. So generally, application owners will use um, the API to install pre-built instrumentation for their framework or libraries. Um, and the SDK is used to implement the API. And you can also use the SDK to configure what happens to your telemetry that's collected by the API, including processing and exporting it. So first up, we've got the meter provider, which is the API entry point for metrics. We use a meter provider to obtain meters, which are uh, which you can use for different scopes. Um, a scope here being a logical unit of application code. Um, so for instance, instrumentation for an HTTP client library would be different, um, would have a different scope and therefore a different meter than say a database client library. And we use meters to create instruments, which are what we use to record measurements, which we, uh, consist of a value and a set of attributes. And the SDK provides implementations for all of the above. Meter provider, meters, and instruments. Um, like I said, you can use it to configure what happens to the data that is collected by the API. Um, ooh, I feel like there was one more point, but... 
Okay. That's all really all you need to know right now. Okay, now we're going to get into some concepts that we're going to look at at a high level to help you kind of understand uh, before we get into the metric instruments. So first up, we've got aggregation. Aggregation is the process of combining multiple measurements into a single point. So a really simple example is, let's say you have a set of measurements that represent um, the daily sales of your telescopes over like 30 days. You could aggregate those measurements into a single data point, um, which would give you the total of all your telescopes sold over that time period. Next, we have the notion of temporality. Temporality dictates how you aggregate. Um, and it's related to whether the reported values of additive quantities include previous measurements or not. And there's two flavors. We've got cumulative temporality, which indicates that the measurements are accumulated when they're exported. Um, another way to look at it is it always has the same start time, um, unless your app restarts, in which case all measurements will start from that new start time. We also have delta temporality, which indicates that um, measurements are reset each time they're exported. Or another way to look at it is there's a, a constantly moving start time. Also, um, I'm not sure how many of you were here for Observability Day yesterday, but there was a actually pretty great talk on temporality um, called Does It Add Up? Exploring the Delta Temporality in Open Telemetry and Beyond by CoreLogic's team. So I just want to give them a shout out. Um, if you want to learn more about temporality, I encourage you to seek them out. They might have a booth here, I think, um, or I'm sure you can find them on CNCF Slack. Um, but yeah, the whole session was really getting into temporality. Um, it was neat. I learned some stuff. Monotonicity oh, is related to whether the value that you're recording is always increasing, which is called monotonic or always increasing and decreasing at the same time, which is non-monotonic. I also want to uh, cover dimensions real quick. Dimensions in the context of metrics refer to um, an attribute that's associated with the measurement. So let's say you are um, counting the number of active users to your online telescope shop, and you want to collect some information about these users. So we'll say, let's say you want to collect their location. That would be, um, uh, we'll say country. So the country would be added as a dimension or attribute on those measurements. The last one we're going to cover for the slide is carnality. Um, carnality is generally defined as the number of unique elements in a set. Um, in monitoring, it refers to the uniqueness of an element within a set. So using our example from just now, which is you're counting the number of users to your shop and you're collecting their location. So let's say you decide to collect their country. If your users happen to be all from like the same one or two countries, that's low cardinality. But if you were to collect, uh, say, their city instead and your users are from all over the country in these countries, that would be high cardinality because the uniqueness of that value has increased. Um, Colonati is important to consider because uh, whenever you're collecting telemetry, um, if you are, so let's say you're running a sale on your, on your site and all of a sudden you have users from all over the world that are flocking to your site to get your wonderful discounted telescopes. And if you're still collecting, say, their city, all of a sudden you are experiencing an increase in the load on your system otherwise known as a cardinality explosion, which is a very dramatic term that I enjoy. And um, also another thing to consider is that a lot of backend vendors that you send telemetry to um, will impose car cardinality limits. So just um, something to consider. We won't get into adding dimensions in this session, but since for those reasons that I just outlined above, cardinality is important to consider. Okay, so now that you've kind of learned a little bit about the behind scene pieces of, open tele of metrics in open telemetry, um, let's take a look at the architecture of a metrics pipeline. So you already learned about this part. Um, measurements are recorded by uh, instruments. And from there, a metric reader um, takes these metrics 
and then off they go to the matrix exporter, which translates them into an output format for different protocols. And you can then send them onward to a data analytics tool or tools of your choice. Metric instruments, types, and use cases. So you already learned that met uh, sorry, instruments are what we use to report measurements. Each measurement, uh, sorry, each instrument <laughs> contains the following fields. The uh, first two are required, so instrument name and the kind, uh, which we'll get into a little bit um, in, a, in a little bit. And then there's two optional fields, which is the measure of unit and a description. So I just have a very simple example here. Let's say you want to count, keep a counter of the number of telescopes you sold. Uh, you might want to call it something simple like telescope sold, and you're going to be using a counter. And measure of unit could be telescope, and your description, total telescope sold. What instruments does Open Telemetry provide? Open Telemetry provides six instruments. You've got the counter, up down counter, async counter, async up down counter, histogram, and the gauge. Uh, I'm going to have uh, three columns coming up shortly that indicate the properties of each instrument. We're going to start with synchronicity, whether an instrument is synchronous or not. I really thought I was going to get the uh, pronunciation that time. Um, synchron synchronicity. So an instrument is considered synchronous when an instance of it is called, when an event that's being measured occurs. So let's say you have a user clicking on a button that you're observing. Um, you would want that. Uh, that would be considered a synchronous um, instrument. Um, and a, an instrument is considered asynchronous um, when it reports um, measurements on a set interval. <clears throat> Excuse me. Next, we have the additive property. Ooh, actually, that was too fast. So whether or not you want to use um, a synchronous or asynchronous instrument really comes down to convenience for you. Um, do you want the measurement at the time um, that it's created, or do you want to report it on a set interval? So that's really up to you and your use case. Next, we have additive uh, property, which refers to whether the measurements are summed or not. And, and lastly, we have the monotonicity, which, if you will remember, just refers to whether the measurements you're recording are monotonic, which is always increasing, or non-monotonic, which uh, means it fluctuates or goes up and down, or non-monotonic. This last column here shows the aggregation strategy, or simply the aggregation of each instrument, and it refers to the data point that, uh, the data type that it, each instrument produces. So as you can see, the first four counters all produce sums, histogram produces histogram, and a gauge records the last value. So keeping the list we just went over in mind, why might instrument selection be important? So you learn that there, each instrument has a default aggregation. The default aggregation reflects the intended use of the measurements. So instrument type affects how measurements are aggregated which ultimately impacts, uh, uh, sorry, uh, well, yeah, impacts the type of metric that is exported, which in turn impacts the way that you can query and analyze it. So put another way, different instrument types um, and different aggregations support different modes of analysis. So for example, let's say you want to measure the latency of search results for your telescope shop. So you want to know like how long it's taking um, search results to pop up when users are trying to look for a specific telescope in your shop. So some of these measurements would not make sense because you can't really derive anything useful from that, from that sum. What you would want is a histogram so you can see a distribution of the measurements. So you would want an instrument that will produce a histogram. <laughs> 
Here is a brief framework for how to choose an instrument. Think about how do you want to analyze the data? Do you need the measurement synchronously or can it be reported on a set interval? And finally, are the values monotonic? These will help you decide. And we're gonna go into each instrument a little bit more in depth, starting with the counter, which you can see um, we is synchronous, additive, as well as monotonic. It defaults, uh, the default aggregation is the sum. And examples of usages would be number of, number of bytes sent, total orders processed, total cart ads, total cart ad failures, keeping in mind, of course, you know, this is, uh, we're using the tel telescope shop as our example total checkouts, etc. You'd want to use the counter when you want to count things and compute the rate at which things happen, or when the sum of things is more meaningful than the individual uh, values. So an example of what a graph or chart might look like when you're using the counter would be this. So it's monotonic, which means it's always increasing, which is why it's a straight, -ish, straight line. Next, we've got the up-down counter uh, for use when the measurements you're recording are non-monotonic. Example usages would be number of open connections, number of users, queue size, memory in use. You would want to use this when you have uh, values that are negative or that go up and down, something like this. So as you can see, number of active users is going up over time, going up and down over time, which is realistic. And now we have also an ASIC version of the counter. Uh, example uses, usages are CPU time, cache hits and misses, total network bytes transferred. You would want to use this when you need a sum of your measurements, but they may be too expensive to record synchronously, um, or it's more appropriate, or you just would prefer to record them on a set interval. And since it's monotonic, the chart will look like this as well. Next up, we have an ASIC version of the up-down counter. So example usages would be memory utilization, process heap size, number of active shards, changes in the number of active users. Um, you would use this when you need a non-monotonic additive counter to report on set intervals, or when you need an absolute value, not a delta. And again, uh, just an example chart of what this might look like if you're using an async up-down counter. And histogram, so you might have gathered by this point that histogram here refers to both an instrument type as well as an aggregation strategy. Um, open telemetry supports two kinds of histograms. We have the default, which is the explicit bucket histogram, um, where you predefine your buckets ahead of time. Um, and open telemetry does something cool, which is um, if you have measurements that fall outside the maximum upper boundary, it captures those in an additional bucket. You would want to use a histogram when you want to analyze the distribution of measurements to identify trends, or you want to calculate the min, max, and average response time. Uh, you are probably familiar with what a histogram looks like. Here's a little simple example. Um, so I do want to just talk about exponential bucket histograms real quick. Um, we won't get too deep into them, but they are pretty cool and um, powerful. Again, there was a talk yesterday at Observability Day. I don't think the recordings will be available for a while, but if you want to find the Grafana booth and talk to this team about their um, talk, they did a really good job with um, talking about open telemetry exponential histograms, specifically in Prometheus. Um, or um, there's also a blog post written by one of my colleagues called Exponential Histograms um, that's available on the OpenTelemetry blog right now. Lastly, we have the gauge, which is non uh, asynchronous, non-additive, and non-montonic, and it records a last value. So examples of uh, use cases would be CPU utilization, temperature of hardware, average memory consumption, you want to use this when you want to report data that isn't useful to aggregate across dimensions and you have access to those measurements asynchronously. Or when you want finer grain control of when a non-additive measurement is made, particularly when its uh, purpose is a distribution. Here's an example of what a chart might look like if you're using a gauge. Um, 
you might have this question too, which I had um, when I was putting this deck together, which is when might you want to use an ASIC up down counter versus a gauge? Because they're a little bit similar. Um, as a refresher, the async up down counter is not monotonic, records an absolute value. Gauge record is also async, um, but records the last value. Essentially, it depends on whether you uh, whether you need to sum values across dimensions. So you want to use the up down counter when you want to aggregate or sum across dimensions in a meaningful way, and the gauge when you want to report data that isn't useful to sum across dimensions or when individual measurements um, are important on their own and do not need to be summed together. So temperature is like a pretty simple but common example. You. What are you going to do with a sum of temperature readings, right? Oh my gosh, OK, we might make it. OK, so what's next? Um, we're going to do a quick recap, and then I have some um, suggestions for what to explore next. And then we're going to just do a quick look at credences. I have some people to thank. And OK, so we learned about what a metric is, why they're useful for observability, what open telemetry is, and some of the utility and customization options. I might have glossed over those. It provides in metric generation and collection. Um, we do have an open telemetry project booth in the solutions showcase, so please stop by. We have lots of lovely, lovely people who are, would be more than happy to talk to you um, about metrics as well as um, anything hotel related or observability related. Um, we also talked about metrics concepts as they apply in open telemetry. And we also looked at open telemetry metric instruments and how to choose one. And um, I've basically put this table together from the slides that we just looked at. Um, I'll leave this up here for a second. But yeah, this is just a, basically a summary of all the metric instrument types that we just talked about. Okay, what to explore next? So, like I said, there's so much more to learn. There's so much I didn't cover, um, whether in depth or even like mentioned at all. Um, first suggestion would be to try it out yourself. Um, instrumentation, implementation. There's something called the Views API, which is really neat, and you can use it to um, actually change the ag default aggregation of these instruments. So, um, that's one of the customization options I didn't really go over. Um, but yeah, look into push versus pull based exporting, application runtime metrics. Um, the Open Telemetry Collector provides different processors you can use to transform your metrics data. And there's so much more. This is just like a suggested reading slash exploration list. And finally, credits and references. Uh, specifically, thank you to these people. And then I have some references, um, including the two talks that I mentioned that were that happened yesterday, and whose recordings I believe will be up in the next few weeks. Um, but otherwise, I, I believe these teams are here. So yeah, if you want to learn more or chat more about open telemetry metrics, we are here um, and we are at time. So thank you so much for your patience and for sacrificing this beautiful day to be here with me. And enjoy the rest of your time in Amsterdam. <laughs>